the Galaxy S9 Plus clone. Now it's been a year since the S8 and S8 Plus phones we've thoroughly enjoyed here on C4 eTech and we are just days away from the Galaxy S9's launch. And now I stumbled upon this Galaxy S9 Plus clone. I thought it would be fun to unbox it and check it out here. So here we go. Hey guys, Ash here from C4 eTech and in today's video, let's unbox this Galaxy S9 Plus clone and take a quick look. If you do end up liking this video, don't forget to hit like and turn on notifications. Let's now get to it. Here's the box that the S9 Plus clone comes in. Looks quite a lot like what we'd expect from Samsung. In fact, the back even has a list of specs. Seems like they've lifted it right off the S8 Plus's box and just changed the 8 to 9. The box looks quite authentic by itself. But the moment you open it up, you notice a lot of the cloniness, if I may put it that way. We first have the S9 Plus, it's got a sticker stating the same. Peeling it off, the back now. The blue back looks good. The phone has a nice heft. It's metal to the sides and the back's plastic though. Anyway, back to the box. Let's see what else is there. We've got a travel adapter, doesn't say fast charging or anything. We then have a Type-C cable and a pair of earphones. Fun fact, even Samsung's own, say, On7 Prime, which is priced much more than this clone, doesn't get both of these. Then there's a sad little leaflet and that's pretty much it. So back we go to the S9 Plus, removing the button protecting rubber. It looks quite close to what Samsung offers. The blue back catches light very well. The Galaxy S9 Plus logo at the bottom. What I really like are those dual cameras. Now, I highly doubt they are dual cameras, but what I was talking about was the placements. The vertical alignment is really nice. The fingerprint scanner below the dual cameras. Why couldn't have Samsung thought about that? It scanned my finger super quick and was also very fast to unlock, but it kind of felt fishy. Turns out it's not a real fingerprint scanner. It unlocks the display no matter which finger I used, whether I've scanned it or not. By the way, this is recreating Samsung experience overall from a st software standpoint. And when I tried to see what version of Android it was running on, it said 7.0. But tap that and you get the marshmallow Easter egg. In fact, there's a lot of hidden stuff here. You can change a lot of the boot animations, modify the model number, serial number, RAM size, storage size, and so on. Like to explain, for example, this phone's supposed to have 128 gigs of storage. It actually has two. It runs on a MediaTek chip. Antutu can't be installed. Even when sideloaded Antutu and Geekbench both crash. It's a low-end MediaTek chip with two gigs of storage and one GB RAM. Funnily enough, it has a recreated version of the Bixby page that loads up faster than Samsung's own Bixby page. By the way, there's a dedicated Bixby key to, uh, to the left beneath the volume keys, talking about placements, the power keys present to the right, the headphone jack, primary microphone, speaker, and USB Type-C port are located at the bottom. Up top, we have a tray that supposedly can take either two SIMs or a SIM and a microSD card. To the front, we've got a clone of the Infinity display. Now, this isn't an AMOLED panel, but there is a kinda always-on functionality included. The home key shown here is not a 3D touch key, of course. Here's another interesting thing to note. This clone has an auto brightness sensor. Isn't that just ridiculous? A 6,000 rupee knockoff from China has something that Samsung omits on their 13,000 rupee phones. And by the way, even haptic feedback is not disabled. Now, on a more serious note, the display seems to be a 720p TFT panel. It's not too bad. The clone seems to do a fair job mimicking all the software too. Whether it's the dialer, contacts, it's all skinned kinda similar to mimic Samsung experience. There's even support for the edge panel and an option to mimic the iris scanner. Of course, you can't expect a lot from it, but it needed to see my eyes to unlock and that's saying something. It was better than what I expected it to be. Overall, given the lowest of low internals, the phone was surprisingly snappy. The clones just keep getting better these days. By the way, if you expected the cameras to be decent, then my friend, you're gonna be in for a disappointment. The dual camera setup to the back is an utter and complete dud. Here are some samples we shot. It's bad, like really bad. So there you have it, a quick look at what you can get for about 6,000 rupees with this Galaxy S9 Plus clone. 
the real deal should be coming out in a couple of days and I'm sure you like me can't wait to see what Samsung has in store for us. Stay tuned and we'll be bringing you a lot of coverage on the S9 and S9 Plus. So that's it for this quick video. I wasn't planning on shooting this. I had to put all this together using a cheap laptop, a 500 rupee tripod and whatever phone I was carrying with me. I just saw this phone and thought it would be very interesting for you guys and decided to put together a last minute video. So apologies for the drop in quality this time. We'd be back to our crispy best from tomorrow. If you still hated the video, you know what to do. But if you did like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on notifications. And that's it for now. Till next time, this year is Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech and I'm signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.